This episode is brought to you by Full Bucket Veterinary Strength Supplements, the leader in digestive health for dogs, cats, and horses. Welcome to Chats with the Chatfields. This is a podcast to expand your idea of what impacts veterinarians, pet owners, and basically all animal lovers in the galaxy as humans. We are your hosts. I'm Dr. Jen the Vet. And I'm Dr. Jason. And if you've not yet subscribed to our show, why not? Just go to chatfieldshow.com and subscribe today. And if you want to reach us and you've got a message full of love and positivity, you can find me at jen at chatfieldshow.com. And for all of you folks who like to keep it real, you can find me at jason at chatfieldshow.com. Okay. So, uh, Jason, how you doing over there? I'm doing great. I know you're shocked because that was the shortest uh, intro to my email I've ever had. Just straight to it, right? I normally have some kind of saying or something. I don't know what. Yeah, some snarky. Today's not that day. I'm so excited about our topic. I want to get right right into it. Okay. Well, I mean, me too. Also, we have, I'm, I'm excited not only about the topic, but about our guest. What, Jason? What, what are you trying to say? Why do you got to do that to me? That's not- <laughs> That makes me feel terrible. All right. I'm excited about the guest too. I'm always excited about any guest. It doesn't matter who it is, but especially today, it's very exciting. Lots of energy folks. Cause there's going to be a lot of energy. Not, not from me for sure. (laughs) You're going to get the normal amount of energy from me. The normal amount of energy from Dr. Jason, Mm. but we're just going to bring him right in because I feel like for a lot of pet owners and pet parents, he needs no introduction because he's so huge on social media because Like he lives to talk to pet lovers about pets. Um, And also he is a leader in the veterinary industry. He is currently the chief veterinary medical officer for DVM 360, one of the leading multimedia publications in our industry. So please everyone welcome into the chat room, Dr. Adam Chrisman. Hey. You know, it's always a pleasure to see both of you. You know, I just feel like we should just be breaking bread and hanging out. I'm down with that. Let's do it. I mean, I I don't turn down bread. No, never, (laughs) ever. Although maybe that doesn't quite go with today's topic. But you're right. Bread is great. It tastes good. Right. Yes. You know that song, by the way, went back in the day, that song, Red, Red Wine. Do you know that's red? Yeah. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. You sang it. You sang it. no, I thought oh, that was okay. actually a religious song. When I was a kid, I thought it was bread <laughs> make wine. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> so I'm singing it in the car, and they're like, no, Adam, it's bread. I'm like, bread makes wine. Oh, like, my no. Lord. Why don't we sing this on Sundays? This is so great. It's very <laughs> so contemporary. <fun>. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny. We could make it into a religious song. That'd be, you know what? Right. That's awesome. I love it. <laughs> yes. Okay, uh, but lo- like if we, if me and Jason and our bajillion car trips that we took growing up, um, if we went down the the rabbit trail of song lyrics that we got wrong, oh like god, what we, we, <laughs> what we thought they were, what they turned out to be, we would be oh, here god, for a while. Awful, right? But yes. that, yeah, because the rain, about any of the rain is a miracle, the right? Rain is a miracle. <laughs> Adam's like, what do you, what, what? I don't even know that one. The raid is miracle. It's a Billy Billy Joel was the greatest. The uh, oh, wow. the longest time was the yeah. The song was the longest time. The greatest miracle was a, and was it was the, not was to us lyrics. for many many years. And it's what's worse, Adam, is when it's your friends. When it's your friends who tell you you're wrong. No, I'm right. My parents said I was right. No problem. And right. they're like, no, you're wrong, my friend. Because what is a miracle? Yeah, no one I mean, knows. As a- <laughs> Did we thought they were cool, you know? Yeah, that's <laughs> right. <exactly. laughs> okay, all right. The, there, uh, we digress. Okay, all right, listeners, <laughs> listen up because we're going to talk about something um, what, that I think is really fun. Having had uh, border collies in the past, I don't think my French or I don't think the farm fresh Frenchie really thinks it's that cool anymore. But we are going to talk about kind of like how to do fun activities outdoors with your pet safely safely what considerations should you take and the reason we have dr chrisman on is not only because he's fabulous but also because look at this man right those of you who are on the youtube channel (laughs) this is a fit dude look if you everyone's loud jason calm down Uh, i can just imagine the middle bam he's on big screen now look (laughs) at him he's got (laughs) stuck up his I feel like that's right. Look at this man. It's crazy. 
I know. But look, if you look on his social media, he oh posts all kinds of things because fitness and health, physical yeah. fitness is important to him and has been for years. And also, if you go to any of the DVM 360 Fetch veterinary conferences, you'll potentially find there at 6 a.m., not Dr. Jen Nevet, no, but you will find Dr. Adam Chrisman leading like poolside fitness or something. Oh, wow. Crazy. I yes. didn't know that. That's cool. Yes, that's it. what he does. Yeah. And so we're going to talk about fitness and things you can do outside and safely involve your pet. And so I thought, who better to talk about it, right? Correct. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, listen, I mean, more than half of our animals in this country are overweight or obese, more than half, 56%. So it's like, it's a, it's a catch 22. And it's so easy. I was just like chatting about this the other day when they're saying, oh, diet and exercise. It's easier said than done. It really is way easier. Trust but me, like, I agree. How, right. But how can we make it fun for both of us too, both us, you know, humans, and then the dogs. So, mm -hmm. and I think there's a lot of great things that we can do that are, don't cost a lot of money and just, and we're all about enhancing, which is what I'm obsessed with the human animal bond. So yes. like what better way to do it than to not do it with treats, but to do it with love in a different way. Right. Yes, like an activity. And, like an activity. Exactly. Right. There's doggy bingo. Did you know that that's a thing? You can do outdoor dog bingo. You I literally <laughs> Yeah. So I'm telling you. So almost have you ever heard of cow bingo? Oh, cow, no. cow, cow no. tipping, of course, right? Not yeah. cow bingo. No. But they can do a whole thing where you actually can like lift your dog and move around to another area on like a human game board outside. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and awesome. They do all those different things. And then easy things too, of course. Like just okay. wait, walk. wait, hold hold on. Hold on. I'm no, I'm in a, so what do you Pack do? Pack the bingo truck up, friend. You, oh, you no. take your dog, so get, a giant listen, board. Maybe this is just in Jersey, but still. <laughs> you, know, you get a spray can and you, it's probably illegal, but you get a spray can, you do it in the field. Right. And you just like, you know, make a big bingo right. board. And mm -hmm. then they, all the numbers and you take your dog and you have to hold them or her the entire time without dropping them. Oh, you know, like, I get it. Like weak or whatever. So like you gotta, so you're a human. So like BI, then you're moving to the, the different areas as oh, a chip. Oh my gosh. Wow. Have you, have, you, have you done that? Have you participated? I have participated. Of course. Uh, don't be ashamed. That sounds cool. Did what you hear his voice it? change? Did you hear his voice it, change, yeah, everybody? He was, yeah, he, he was like, like yes, I have. <gasps> I have participated. Well, has anybody, have you done a doggy yoga at all? Has anybody done like, like goat I, yoga? Look, 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 listen, listen, listen. Our listeners know the chatterboxers are re readily aware that I don't do yoga. <laughs> yeah, I don't, <laughs> I don't either. But I understand that it's uh, a big thing, of course, it is. So like yoga and dog yoga. So I think that's a lot of fun things to do. But I know we were just talking earlier, like simple things too. Like you could take them to an off-leash dog park if that's what mm -hmm. you want to do, or you know, a, a stroll. Um, you know, I, it all varies with like the type of pet parent that we have. If you know, yeah. depending on our wants and needs, of physical disabilities, all those different things. Okay, but so the type of pet parent I am, uh, I I guess what could it, what could do for me would do good for me is I would sprint right from the couch to the refrigerator and then sprint back. <laughs> <laughs> that, and as long as I make my dog, maybe we could race. We could have sprints back and forth at the commercial breaks. Is that good enough or is that not going to – I mean, well, that's that, about what that's I can as good as, That's as good as my wiener races. That we yes! I, I just said wiener races. You I did. We, wiener, wiener races. Now, look, I know what happens at your house. Like, the morning calisthenics consist of – all the like, okay, so he has four dachshunds, everybody, and mm. it consists of the dachshunds running down the ramp to the backyard, right. and everyone take, making bets on what toy Clark W. Griswold, the most mischievous of the um, of Adam's um, dachshunds, is going to snatch and run down the ramp with and take into the yard, right? right. Like that's morning calisthenics at your house. That's awesome. I love it every day, yeah. huh? It's on Every Instagram. Day. You you can place yeah. your bets. Yep. Yes. You place Wait. your bets. Like, what? Yeah. He, he took down the stormtrooper today. And wow. so he, <laughs> today, in honor so of Obi, I'm taking down a stormtrooper. That's so, right. Uh, <laughs> Perfect, right? <laughs> and Obviously, sometimes he takes out his shoe. <laughs> yeah, he takes my shoe down a lot. He just took down, before I was on, he just took down our beach towel because, you know, we have like the towels for the pool. So he's yeah. like, 
him off the ring and he brings that down the ramp too. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's part of his exercise. And he's so proud, of course, with his little wiggle butt that he does. But. Oh, yes. No, he he struts with um, the item. Now, that's after he he grabs it and he runs with his ears back like Cosette does when yeah. she's running, when she knows that oh, she's not cozy. supposed to have it. Um, no. Yes. And he runs down the ramp and all the others. I don't know what the other dogs are doing, but they're not doing that. And no. uh, and then, of course, we hear you laughing always in the background. <laughs> you like, every, every day it's funny. That's something every new day, every day. Cracks, uh, yeah, because he's a little dog, huge personality, and so he just cracks me up. So yes, yeah. he's a maniac. He's a maniac, that Clark. Like a a yes. lunatic all the time, you know. Yeah. But um. So okay. Oh, I, yeah. I have a couple. I have a couple questions, right? Um, okay. So I would say uh, I was kidding about sprinting to the fridge. I, I I will not sprint to the fridge. That that ruins the whole trip, right? But I I do agree with exercising with with your pets. It always sounds like fun, especially this past. You know, in 2020, we had that weird pandemic situation. I walked my dogs more than I ever have mm -hmm. in the past. Lord knows why. I have no idea why. But we, all of a sudden, I, I pretend to have all this free time, walk the dogs, mm -hmm. whatever. But I, I did start to go running with my dogs. Now, I, I, I'm a veterinarian, so I should know this. But I'm going to ask you, um, you know, I was concerned uh, because I, I, my dogs didn't go running very much. And so I went running. I think most yeah. people like to run with their dogs. You see it all the time. Is that necessarily a bad thing for your dog to just get to it or should you warm warm them up should you is there stretches you can do with your dog should you start running a quarter mile then train them up i have no idea i stopped no. and that was my excuse i didn't want to hurt my dog so i stopped running <laughs> so i didn't want to hurt the dog well, I mean, right well we as veterinarians go through our differential diagnoses in about two seconds before Correct. we take two strides oh my right. god and yeah or cruciate ligament yeah, whatever done. it is i'm out yeah. right yeah <laughs> but you know, a lot of the breeds in general, they are meant to just go at it and have fun and intuitively. I mean, that's what nature allows them to do. But if they're overweight or obese, as you, as we all know, that can slow things down. So, you know, to slowly increase their exercise over time, if you have an overweight or obese dog. But um, yeah, the exercise is the best. And then also swimming is another great thing. And oh, I also yeah. recommend listeners is like, if they don't have a pool, look into either hydrotherapy, certain areas around, maybe have like the underwater treadmills or, mm -hmm. you know, those. Oh. you can put together a whole, like a P, now fit PT is huge in vet med. Right. Physical oh therapy. yeah. And it's just not for orthopedics. It's, you know, it, it could also be a weight loss regimen that's being used as well. So, mm -hmm. uh, so there's a whole bunch of reasons for it, but I think that the swimming is a really, really nice one to do. I never thought about swimming with, with the dog. I'm going to call the local Y and see if they can have, uh, and I'm not kidding. I, well, especially, especially for yeah. obese dogs, right? Or, or yes. older dogs. It's great to start with or that. Or people, right? Or people. Right. But um, one of the, so one of the things that I guess asked all the time is how, how do like doc is, do you think that he's overweight? And then the, like the question or the answer is always yes, but um, almost always. But um, then they say, how do you know? Because my wife and I are having an argument about it, right? Like, right. Um, and so for everyone listening and Adam, like these are the three things I look at. And then um, like, I don't know if you have something different because I think every veterinarian looks at them a little differently. Um, and so I, there's so many variations available in dogs, right? And so I want to see a waist. If I look down um, from the top of the dog, I want to see their chest be a barrel and a little waist and then flare out again on their hips. Underneath, I want to see from the chest bone, right? The sternum or the, I guess the keel, some people call it. Um, you want to see that low. And then I want to see their belly kind of tuck up into their um, back, back legs. And then I want to be able to easily feel, but not see their ribs, right? um yeah. what are what are other characteristics that you look at uh that's that's exactly what i look at i i also look at the neck too the brisket just to see if it's not super thick the you brisket. know right that's it's literally what, what you and so there's that area Cosette, and then Cosette. also no Cosette, he doesn't mean you no 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 no, no, no. never no. perfect baby angels which she is <laughs> But whatever she has no brisket she's no neck so let's move on she, she is a brisket <laughs> that's all she is <laughs> yes. but, you know many of us probably i love the subjective like the body condition score and then when there's a disconnect which tends to happen just like you said jen with the pet mm -hmm. owner is like you ha often have a chart in the exam room or something i said you tell mm -hmm. me what you think your dog is and they'll say oh she's a three and here's why i think she's a four 
You know, yeah. so you try to come to terms with the fact of it. And then I'll even take a picture of that chart because usually the person that is in denial is not the one that's in the exam room. Right, so. <laughs> right. It's the one at home that feeds them all the treats, right? Right. Yes. Always, so, always. Nobody ever that. comes to the vet who's feeding their dog inappropriate treats ever, ever. Right. No. So I, I do these videos too. Like I would, and I said, you're going to send this to your significant other when you get home and we're going to hold uh, them up. So like, this is the three. This is not a three dad. Like, <laughs> four. Right. That's Stop fun. with the treats. That's Stop right. with the treats. Yeah. Okay. Right. So um, now that we know that, gosh, that's a, that's a very sobering statistic that 56% of uh, pets are obese right now in the United States. Um, and we know how to determine if they're obese. Uh, I see Dr. Jason sending me the signal to take a break here. We are wow, going to take a break. It was like a, break. supposed to be a secret. You ruined it. No. Um, so listeners know they're probably wondering like, why are we not have not right. taken the break yet? So we're going to take a very quick commercial break and then we're going to be right back. And then we're going to talk about some other things that you can do um, to get fit alongside your pet and how to keep them safe um, from diseases and injury while we're doing it. So hang with us. We'll be right back. It's Dr. Jen, the vet, and I'm here with my friend and colleague, Dr. Keith Latson. He's got an incredibly interesting story all about full bucket health. My college roommate and vet school housemate, Dr. Rob Franklin and I were collaborating on some cases. Both of us were struggling with diarrhea in some of our patients, whether it was after a procedure or after, after an illness. So we created a formulation, but we didn't want to just create a formulation. We also wanted to create a movement in animal health for being able to help animals in need through the use of our products that we develop. That really has resulted in our one-for-one -one giving program, which we're re really proud of, as much as we are our formulations for dogs, horses, and cats. And so if you wanna know more about their one-for-one -one giving at Full Bucket, or if you're interested in better supporting your dog, cat, or horse's digestive health, head over to fullbuckethealth.com to learn more. All right, V. What do you have for us from vet school? These view from vet school brought to you by the AVMA Trust, veterinarian inspired coverage protecting you through it all. Hello and welcome to V's view from vet school. Today, I want to share the drama surrounding exams in vet school. No news flash there. I mean, school is school. There will be exams. It seems like every time I turn around though, we are having an exam in at least one class. It's almost unreasonable. Now, it could surely be worse. I mean, I've heard from reliable sources from Texas A&M that they used to receive a packet every fourth Friday with every class exam that you had four hours to take it, complete it and expect to pass it. That sounds terrible and terrifying to me, but at MSU, we have multiple exams some weeks, singles on others, and quizzes along the way. I, for one, appreciate this schedule. It seems much more manageable than what Texas A&M at least used to do. Why else do I appreciate it? Because when I was a forensic analyst, we didn't get a schedule of when crime scenes were going to occur. And sometimes they stacked up on a single shift. And when I worked in veterinary medicine as a technician, the day could be unpredictable because while there is a schedule, you never know when that heat stroke dog will walk in as an emergency or the black cat for three days will arrive unexpectedly. So I say embrace the suck and leverage it for the learning opportunity it presents. It's an opportunity to practice for practice. Thanks for listening. I'm V and that's my view. Want to share your view? Are you seeing what I'm seeing? Or do you have a question about vet school? Send it to me at info at chatfieldshow.com. These View from Vet School, brought to you by the AVMA Trust, veterinarian inspired coverage protecting you through it all. Okay, and we're back with the uh, wonderful Dr. Adam Christman um, talking all about how to stay fit with your pets. Yeah. Yes. And, you know, I was just, we were just talking about like some treatment, um, well, some other options out there. Have you ever heard of any wearables that you can put on your dog as well as yourself? Ooh. Yes. 
Yes. So, so like, so true story. Um, I got one of those. It's kind of like a doggy Fitbit. Um, the yeah. um, Animo by Sure Pet Care with Merck Animal Health. You put it on their collar, uh, and I got it as a cynic, right? I was like, this is gonna be silly and whatever, and it was actually really quite interesting because I could tell um, how much she traveled. I could tell was she coughing or barking and was she scratching? And it was all on my phone. Um, it was really cool. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's just another tool that I think is pretty cool. Uh, I just rhymed. That's a tool. That's pretty cool. I'm a puffer, I don't know it. Dropping beats here. Left and right. Uh, it's possible. <laughs> Yes, it is possible. <laughs> but yeah, I like those things because just to your point, it does, it collects all this data to your mm -hmm. smartphone too. And, and not just like steps, but also calories burned. And then if they were trembling or shaking, maybe you yes. didn't even know that you're going. They have had like noise sensitivity from fireworks or thunderstorms. Yep. So there's a lot of great data that's out there, but I like to use that in conjunction with like a treatment plan. Mm -hmm. And I know all of us all veterinarians, we know that obesity is a disease and we treat it as such like any treatment plan. Mm -hmm. So having those tools any tool at this point really does help, you know, give mm -hmm. a better peace of mind to help get some of that weight off. It, it, it does. Um, but the other thing that I think is important to recognize is that as the seasons change, the weather's nicer outside. Don't leave your pet inside. You're outside more, take your pet with you. Because as, as we alluded to earlier in this episode, it's an, that strengthens your bond with them. So if they get to go with you for these activities, so it's a little bit like, a date is more fun if you do something besides just sit down and eat. But if you do, if you do a fun activity together, it's way more fun. Um, you know, if you go bowling or, um, you know, go paddle boarding or something like this. You want us um, to take you, you take, take your pet to the bowling alley. That's like, oh my God, that you gotta take, cozy, take cozy. Well, cause that cause might that, be mistaken. Oh. for Right. Just, ball. oh, my fault. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. That's what I was thinking. So um, I, I'm also she, thinking a bowling alley is not the best place for a yeah for but a, she is gonna daughter. go paddle boarding with me next month um so yeah we'll see how she does with that uh but um that sort of activity with your pet actually enhances that bond it allows for you to work on that communication with them um and so the problem then becomes like how, how do you how do you do that without with making sure that you're not presenting a life-threatening situation to your pet right yeah I mean, listen, I mean, Jen, you have the the poster child of overheated, heat stroke prone breeds, <laughs> <laughs> you know? And so, like, you have to be so careful of, like, the brachycephalic or the ones with the pushed-in bases, of course. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's a good point that you bring up. Like, how do we do it without overdoing it on them? Yeah. And I think... You know, having this types, these types of conversations and educating the pet owners of that, it's not a one size fits all for every dog. I mean, of no. course, and for every age too. So a two year old mm -hmm. dogs wants to either be different than a 12 year old. So, um, but knowing all the different options that are out there, I mean, if you're a fit person who has a pretty fairly fit dog where you love to go camping and hiking, they're used to that. But if you try to, try to do that all of a sudden with them, I think that might be a little bit of a culture shock for them. They might be like, hold on mom, hold on dad, you know? <laughs> So, yeah, um, I agree. Yeah. I agree. Especially in the South, right? The air is heavy. Um, yes. humidity is real. Uh, and so the struggle is real for those little smush face to breathe. Um, but the, the other struggle, thing, the struggle is real for, for, for every, everybody, humans, it's, it's, yeah. uh, you can't just go run eight, 18 miles. If you've never done no. it. You really know it's a good point. You have to, you have to pay attention. So. Yeah. You, you do have to work up to it. You have to work up to it. But then the other thing too, is, um, you, you want to make sure like all the, all those things that we maybe don't think of so often. So it's hot outside. Hey, the sidewalk is hot friends and you right. have shoes on and your pet doesn't. Not. Um, I used to go running <clears throat> when I was younger um, and I would take my border collie at the time running. And she actually, this was before I was a veterinarian. She actually <laughs> um, got a blister on a paw pad um, and it was very painful for her. Um, it right. was also very painful when I had to lance it. Um, but yes, yeah, so you had, those are considerations to think of is how hot is the asphalt or the cement? Yeah. Can they get on the grass? They're not trying to be jerks. They, they really, their feet are hot. Um, that sort of right. thing. And <clears throat> the other piece is that, um, if we're outside, we're not the only ones outside. Right. Right. They might run into other dogs. Is that what you're saying? Or cats? Or a cat out? Or birds? Pesky insects. Yeah. Insects? Yeah. Yeah. Pesky insects. 
all those different types of things out yep. there. So yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, it is like, it's a, it's a great point that if you're going to be outside, it's wonderful, but make sure they're protected with their heart room prevention, clean right. tick prevention, you know, all those different things, of course, and to check them when they come back inside as well. I think that's always crucial because, you know, some of the, I, in our area, it ticks and I was, you know, go over them and say like, they love to live in the webbing of the paw pads or underneath mm -hmm. the tail, under yep. the collar, this is that you really wouldn't think that you would find them. Mm -hmm. So it's just always good due diligence to kind of get in that repetition, that routine, just to look at that as well. Yeah, I agree. Um, I, so you should, you should talk with your veterinarian and get a uh, recommended uh, flea and tick prevention. Um, and then you should still check them. And that's the question I get all the time is that, so we went hiking and we took our dog, but, um, you know, we, we didn't realize that he had a tick on him. We thought we had him on prevention. Yeah. And most prevention, um, you know, flea prevention is great. It's no problem, but ticks are tricky. And so not all of them, um, have the same speed of kill for tick prevention. So you do want to check them over because the longer they're attached, the more likely they are. Look, oh my gosh, there's visual there. aids, visual aids. Look, I, look, I feel like I'm in a Maybelline commercial. <laughs> this is tick spoo number five. That's yeah. so funny. <laughs> Just <What>? call. <laughs> but I mean, how many of you have these? I mean, you kind of put them on your, your ring, your keychain, or whatever, what? but like, I, I don't I even know what these. that is. I know what is oh, that's that? a New Jersey thing. What is it? It's like it's a, a, it's like a it's like a messed up measuring spoon, right? It's I, got a I know it's a thick right. spoon, and so like you get. The oh, head I get it. Of, of course. Like oh, so gross. yes. Oh. Yeah. You know what? Then, you know what? You know what's important about that? Like, if you remove a tick using that tick spoon, that tool, you don't squish them because most of the right. like diseases that ticks give to pets and people, if you squish the tick to pull it out. You're just squishing it in, and they may not yeah. have even infected you yet. So that that that's a good tool. Yeah. Yeah. And look, do you guys know you can actually send it out in the mail? The tick. You send it out to the, yeah. and like you can identify. They tell you what you got, right? They tell you what kind of tick yeah. it is, so that way you know this might be one that's transmissible. Over, I have. You know, yeah. yeah, I have yeah. never uh, never heard of a tick spoon ever. Me either. Don't I feel I feel I feel terrible. I haven't ever heard of a tick Wait, spoon, Jason. right? Don't you find it odd that I randomly just had this on my desk? I, I, I didn't want to mention that, but I did. I'm like, well, maybe he's just super prepared. I don't know. And he had two of them, friend. Yeah, not one. Are those for like different sized? There's like a quarter, a quarter no, cup. Different tick, dogs. Or what is that? No, I'm literally just like in here. It's four dollars on Amazon. And I, I do I talk about this a lot of like the live streams, my TikTok, yes. TikTok yes. for tick. Yeah, mm. but it's always a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, that it was is. awesome. That was, that was, that was a moment right there. I'll tell you that much. Hey, hey, professional. Wow. He's a professional. Yeah. Right. Um, <clears throat> professional media guy, right? Did I not tell you he's the chief VMO oh. for TVM 360? Okay. So yeah. listen, there's a, one other thing yeah. that, um, like, I think, I think the world at large would be disappointed if I didn't bring it up. And that is that if you're taking your pet outside, if you're going to the dog park more, if you're walking on the streets, um, like if you're taking it to the streets, no, I'm just kidding. But if you're walking on the street, if you're walking on trails, if you're at the no leash park, all of these places have wildlife, right? Yeah. Uh oh. There's I wildlife know. present. Going. And so bring you it home, Sheffield. Bring it yeah. home. I know you're feeling it already. I'm gonna talk about vaccination. <laughs> so you want to talk, talk with your veterinarian so that you can have the appropriate preventatives already on board and in place. But I will go ahead and tell you, uh, if you think that um, any of these vaccines are not appropriate for your pet's lifestyle, you send me an email full of love and positivity, however, at Jen at chatfieldshow.com. But um, lepto, uh, distemper, uh, hepatitis, para-influenza, parvo, rabies, plus or minus Lyme, right? Lyme, there's a, there's a vaccine for Lyme disease in dogs. Um, <clears throat> let's see what I, canine influenza. Hello, hello. In the midst of an avian influenza outbreak, okay? Um, and they just had those ducks in Colorado that had avian influenza that were in the dog shelter, okay? Um, can we say perfect storm? We could. All right. Oh. Um, yeah. Uh, and Bordetella. So all of those things are things that you should have your pet vaccinated for. All right. Dr. Chrisman, what do you think about that? 
I, I mean, I couldn't agree with you more, of course. I tell everyone we're, we're veterinarians, not vaccinarians. And so, you know, having that conversation, um, it, it's not a one size fits all again. But mm -hmm. to your point, it's just, listen, I've, I've had clients that literally live in high rise apartments that have their dogs that never touch the ground, you know, like little fee food poodle type things. So yeah, maybe we'll have a different conversation about some of those vaccines. But for the most part, I couldn't agree with you more about like, you know, because you just don't know these days, you just don't know. So you would rather just be more proactive than reactive. Well, and the risk is huge, right? Like, so let's say, so we're, so we're going to vaccinate, right? Um, it's going to cost some money. So anywhere you are, every, okay, everything costs money, um, but it's going to cost you a little money, but the cost of any one of those preventatives is a pittance compared to the risk and the cost incurred if your pet contracts any of those diseases. I mean, that's just a fact of life. Um, and so, <clears throat> so people, you know, we, we need to vaccinate, right? What do you think, Jason? Um, yes, I would agree. Vaccinating uh, all of your animals is a perfectly acceptable course of action. What do you mean? What do I think? Of course, you got to vaccinate <laughs> all of the animals before you take them out or don't take them out. You have to do that. It's, an, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's called, it's responsible pet um, uh, being a pet parent, it's re just being responsible. Right. Um, so especially if you go, especially if you go, uh, to the, to the parks where you're, where you're guaranteed to see other, other animals. I mean, it doesn't make any sense not to. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I, I think that's true. And we we have another episode where we talk about how to safely make friends at a dog park or how to safely go to a dog park, uh, with your pet. Um, but that's one of the places a lot of people go these days is to a dog park or, or something, doggy daycare, or something like that, um, for their pet to get some enrichment for the day. Oh, that's the other thing for dogs that have behavioral issues. I mean, exercise is great, Fantastic. right? Yep. Anxiety. I mean, I, I know we were talking about like, I host a wiener walk, um, twice yes. a year. You want one? Yes. I have to say that one more time. Just like it's, what did he just say? So yeah, we have like over two hundred dachshunds and dachshund friends that come on the boardwalk. But I'll, the reason why I share that is because many of them have reached out. They said, "Oh, Adam, I don't think I want to bring mine because like he's not good with other dogs." I said, "Bring them." <laughs> you know, the pack mentality is alive and well, my friends, right, and they're right. like all the time. I swear, I'm not just making this up. They're like, "Oh my god, it it worked!" I said, "I told you." Like they know that they got to figure out their stuff. Right. You know, mm -hmm. they want to have fun. They want to be part of like the, the cool kids where everybody's yeah. walking. Yeah. So, Ain't no pressure like afterwards. peer pressure. Exactly right. And <laughs> I would get messages afterwards and they were saying like, it's, it cured them. I said, yeah, because they think they're like the hot stuff in the house, right. you know, because they're one of... But then you bring them around, they're like, oh, I'm not as cool as I thought I was. I'm another cool dog. Actually, actually what, <laughs> what, what Adam thinks is when they say, oh, that cured them, Adam's thinking, no. I hear <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, that's what I would be thinking for sure. Right. Well, but but so not, but another piece of that too is um, it's it's an interesting phenomenon when we like we were all shut in for several years, but if you if you have never taken your pet out um, for a walk or to um, on a trail hike with you or whatever, we're putting all these things in your head right now that you're like worried about this, worried about that. So you may have a little anxiety about it your pet feels that anxiety. And so if you are anxious every time you take your pet out, so if the only time they leave the house is to go to the veterinarian where oh. let's face it, a lot of owners are anxious at the vet because you're, you know, you're concerned. You feel like your vet's judging you, by the way, if you feel that way, get a new vet. Um, and you're just, you just, you know, get a little worried about the checkup. Um, and they feel that. And if that's the only time they ever leave the house, then mom and dad are anxious. Hey, maybe that you're giving a little of that anxiety to them, but you go for something like the wiener walk. <laughs> no one can be right. anxious at a wiener walk. Right. No one can. No one's allowed. <laughs> yes. And so they, but, they make it, they make it over it. Now, some of them may not, but they, a lot of times, if there's a bunch more dogs there, they're like, well, I guess yeah. I better sh like, shut it. You know, I don't want everybody to jump on yeah. me. It's true. I mean, how many times do you see that where you see a whole bunch of Frenchies that get together? They they enjoy being together. And dogs in general like the pack. But there is something to be said when they like small dogs, like small mm -hmm. dogs, medium, medium, large and large, because sometimes they get intimidated by like the large, like, whoa, you know. So but I do think that there is something to be said. We know that the research is there for pack mentality for when they go for their walks. I mean, yeah. you see it all the time. We have a, a group around here. They do a bully walk with the pit bulls. They go up and down the, the beach Love um, it. and they 
they yeah they meet like once and twice a week and they always are commenting on how incredible their dogs are too they're just never and i hate i mean knock on what no separation anxiety no anxiety issues they always talk yeah. about that they say if yeah. only other pet parents knew the, the, <laughs> the, how important it is and it doesn't cost them anything no no right. me, me, nothing you know yeah, but that's so, like that. But that's so a bit of enrichment for them, right? It's a mental stimulation. Yeah. It's emotional stimulation. Right. It's all those things that we get when we interact with other humans. And so it, it's important for dogs. And that's one reason I think it's very important to include them in your activities like that, um, because rarely are we so low in those. You, you know, you bring up a great point too, Jen. I, you know, it's like that knock on the door when the doorbell rings, you hear them rah, 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 rah. And I say this to everybody that comes over with us dropping off like the, the, whether it be the painter or a package, I said, can you just say hi to them? They just huh. want to be, right? Good. That's really what yeah. it is. They're just barking <laughs> to say hello. They're not attacking. And right. you're right. They are part of your family. We, we invite them to do so many different things with us all the time. Mm-hmm. The least we could do is take them out with us every now and then for that enrichment. So it's a really good point you just mentioned. I didn't even think of it that way. So I love that. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So uh, let's talk about swimming for a minute. Let's talk about swimming. So uh, because you did bring it up and I love that. Uh, So I had a dog that was afraid to swim right up until she wasn't. Um, Right now, Cosette's not really sure about water because, you know, she has a smashed face. She's a farm fresh Frenchie, um, but she has a little life jacket now. So I'm hoping she'll get more accustomed to it. Um, But uh, my my border collies, when we would go trail, you know, hiking, they would just jump in any puddle that was there. Any like especially to lay down and roll in the mud puddle. And then they would go jump in the lake. um, And I use the word lake very broadly. (laughs) Uh, And so I think we have to be concerned about what water are they getting in? Right. Yeah. And in Florida, we have to be concerned with what else is in the water with them. (laughs) A legit, right? I can only imagine. And, um, you know, with my clients, we're by the ocean. So we do see a lot of salt toxicity that happens actually of dogs that are ingesting water. Oh, Um, wow. Yeah. Low consistent. I had a yellow lab that I, I could have swore it looks like he was pregnant. And wow. um, but, oh, wow. I mean, the whole electrolyte was flat out and everything too. It was just crazy. And then wow. we had to like pump his abdomen, right? He did fine, but like we do see salt toxicity that happens. So you're right. So the, the types of water that they're in, and if they're in the pool, some of them with the chlorine can actually be a little damaging to their skin. It could be, mm-hmm. you know, hurt barrier so i always recommend if you can hose them down afterwards just to kind of yep. get some of that chlorine off of them because some dogs are a little sensitive to it than others french bulldogs hello <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not everything is about the french bulldogs okay not is almost, it almost like everything it I mean, i'm kind of feeling like it is um, so should so should we uh, um you know uh, as responsible pet owners should, should we be scared to take them it's another conversation to have with with your veterinarian who i guess should have you know will we'll probably have a good amount of information for local situation if you live a lot if you live if you if you live uh along the ocean or on the beach then they're they're gonna know hey be careful of this watch for this all that kind of stuff so right. so it is another conversation to have with your vet but but it's not just throw them in the water uh, without you know reckless sure. abandon right right absolutely absolutely mm-hmm. and I, I like that you know jen was talking about like a, a life jacket of course you want to Use your due, due diligence, you know, get them fitted. You can go to any major pet store too, just so you can put a couple of them on to see what their size is. I mean, mm-hmm. dachshunds are just both weird, you know, like they're missing yeah. yes. the front right. legs in the middle, right? Yeah. So yes. <laughs> they just have a crummy core. So, but yeah, so that's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> I need to work on that core. That's a swimming yeah, score. But right. they can't find no, no. Well, but see, but the, really, the, so uh, I, I guess I'm focused on the brachycephalics or the smash face dogs because yeah. they're, ha- and they have a giant head, right? And so it is difficult for them to hold their head up. It's not like a dachshund where they've got that giant long nose where they can just go like this and their right. nose is already six feet in the air. And so holding their head up so that the water doesn't get in their nose is difficult. So you have to recognize that. And that's why those, some of those life jackets are made, especially with a little floaty under the chin so that it helps buoy that giant head, um, up. And so, you know, making sure you have that again, 
vaccinating appropriately, making sure that you let your veterinarian know that this is becoming part of your pet's lifestyle because we see things like Giardia, right? Which is a GI right. parasite you right. could get. We see things like Lepto in those pools because, hey, um, or in those uh, ponds, I hope you don't see it in your pool, in uh, <laughs> ponds and lakes and puddles where wildlife have urinated and <laughs> passed on um, lepto and you can't see it. They can't taste it. Right. Um, and, and so you, you end up with that. So you need to make sure that your veterinary knows so that they can appropriately prepare your pet. So they don't get that. Right. Um, and I like that you mentioned that you have that conversation with veterinary. I it, it just remember I had a, had a yellow Labrador retriever mm -hmm. and I was trying to figure out why this dog was getting fleas. And she's like, I, I just don't understand Dr. Christmas. She's like, I put the flea and tick preventative on topically, then I swim him in the water. And I'm like, when did you, when did you start doing that? Wait, back up for a second. You know, like <laughs> what order was that? I, in? It first because it <laughs> says it's waterproof, but then I throw, I throw him in the pool. And I'm like, I don't, I don't think that's what's, <laughs> I don't think it's to go, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. But it's great that you talk about those things because maybe there might be breakthrough in flea and tick preventative, either like the collars, depending on how long it's been applied or whatever. So I, I, I think that's a really key point to have that conversation. Yep. Like, listen, we just started swimming our dog. We started exercising more because maybe you're seeing some inflammation in the joints potentially. So there's a whole bunch yeah. of things. Yeah. And there's a lot of things that you can do about that as well with the inflammation, especially with our older pets, um, yeah. you know, but also joint inflammation is not limited to older pets or older mm -hmm. people. Like, <laughs> So again, talk to your veterinarian. If your dog is lethargic after you pick up this new exercise regimen, you know, that could be that they're a little achy. They're a little achy. Um, and always make sure that water is available um, and give them a moment to drink the water. Okay. Ah, that's a, you know, that's a great point. I see. I think that's a great point when, especially because the majority of activity that people are going to be doing with their pets is going to be running. It's, it just mm -hmm. is. It's easy. Yep. It's fun. It, you can, you're going to, you can see the, the dog having a great time. Yes. And then you stop and you have a drink of your water, you know, make sure they get a little drink to bring something they can drink it out of. Right. I think that's probably forgotten um, mm -hmm. some for sure. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like the bowls that they now have too. You know how they have the collapsible, collapsible ones. Oh, they're right? great. Yeah. And all those different things that you can bring, even the, the Yeti bowls they tend yeah. to keep things nice and cool. So yeah. um, there's even, I got to send you one, both of you guys, you got to get a splish leash. Have you heard of this too? This is like, a, it's a funny thing. So it's like a, um, you put the leash handle in, not a retractable, but you put it in, you lock it in, but it holds 16 ounces of water in the handle of itself. So oh my gosh. It. Oh, wow. Cool. There's water that's in there, but it also has a pew, pew, pew. So like if you have a coyote or somebody coming at you, like, <laughs> no, 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 no. Bo, 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 bo. <laughs> that's what I would do if a coyote yes. is coming after me. I'd because squirt them with a water gun. <laughs> a coyote is oh petrified of a little, is it a super soaker level yeah. stream or is it just, just like a pew, pew, pew? It's like a, a pew, pew kind of a thing. So I'll have to have them send you a couple so you can see Holy it. Holy moly. So, you have to get them. Yeah. Plus, it's, plus you, get, you could get two and it's like weight. You could do some oh, you know, weights, boom, right? The no, walking weights. Yeah. Yes. Right. Like the heavy hands. Remember those from the 80s, the heavy hands? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. That's awesome. Um, that's interesting. I had not heard of that. Uh, that's an incredible product. Yeah, it's cool. And so you use it too, if like they have mud on their paws or whatever, you could like, you know, kind of- <laughs> Oh, I like that well, idea better. That's cool. It is good. Yeah, that's great. So I'll, I'll have, I'll send you a couple so you can get them because you guys, <laughs> yes. I would love to do that with it. Yeah. Yes. And then, and then do you know what uh, Cosette will then provide me is a list of dogs and or people that should be shot with the splish yeah, leash right? <laughs> besides the coyotes <laughs> yeah. keep those coyotes back yes uh, yes yes i um, what's happening there in new jersey with the coyotes coming after you guys i know yeah. love it oh. love it um or where, or where on earth are you running my friend he's running into some I rogue, know. rogue coyotes coming after you <laughs> okay Holy i'll drop moly. the coyotes i'll drop it i'm sorry drop Jeez. the coyotes Drop the coyotes. Um, okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna give a number right here. So for um, our pack friends that are listening, your pack CE course number for this podcast is CC like Charlie CC two two zero zero one zero. 
All right, CC220010 is your pack course CE number. Um, and of course, we love partnering with them to provide that for you. So tell them that you like it. Anyway, um, so let's see what what other, um, I think that's basically all the, that's all the tips that I had. Dr. Dr. Adam, what is your favorite thing to share with pet owners or the thing you wish every one of them knew about fitness and pets? Um, well, I think that exercise is, you know, for me, the reason why I'm very passionate about it is because it's good for mental health stimulation for me. And it's a big thing for all of us that are tuning in. We all just need, whether it be just a walk, just a time to decompress. Mm -hmm. And you know what, you know who else needs it? Your dog, your dog needs that mental stimulation. And it just can't be the same walk every day in the same location. You got to change it up a little bit. We talked about enrichment. We talked about engagement. And it really, really does mean the whole thing. Because no one wants to put their dog on a drug just yet if it's behavioral issues. So the easiest, the easiest thing that you could do is exercise and yep. provide an enriched environment. <laughs> it's my biggest platform I always talk about is I always say, and then some of the owners will say, well, I have about a two acre backyard. I said, but it's not a leash. It's not a walk. You're not giving them purpose. It's not different, right? Yeah, it's totally right? different. It's totally different. Yeah. So you got to, you know, walk with them. You got to bond with them. Jen, you said it so eloquently earlier about the whole human animal bond. It really mm -hmm. is so, so crucial. You know, it's, you're taking care of both ends on that leash. You know? right? you're, yes. you're the dog. Yeah. It's yeah. true. You know, that old phrase, like the, the family that blanks together, like fill in your favorite activity, right? Yeah. Um, stays together. Well, it's true for yeah. like your furry pet family members too. So right. you've got to include them. You've got to include them once and for all. Um, Dr. Adam Chrisman, uh, this has been a wonderful chat um, all about fitness and pets, among other things. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we want to say thank you so much for joining us here in the chat room today. Oh, thank you to both of you. This is so much fun and a pleasure. Yes, and we hope, uh, folks, don't worry, we're going to, we we are going to use the splish leash to get him back. We will definitely pew, pew, pew with the splish leash if he doesn't come back to the chat room and talk with us again. Um, but that is all we have for you today. Uh, I'm Dr. Jen Levet. And I'm Dr. Jason. And we'll see you guys on the next episode. This episode is brought to you by Full Bucket Veterinary Strength Supplements, the leader in digestive health for dogs, cats, and horses.